So today we are going to discuss about the Hale Chivik theorem. Our team comprises of Deep Patel, Shivanshu Gupta, and my third Naman Kumar. So first things first, just as in any successful project, there are several reasons that inspired its team members. We too had a lot of reasons that pro provided incentive to us throughout the course of our project. Some of those key reasons were the idea of researching and thoroughly going through a topic which felt highly compelling to us. Also, the opportunity to delve deep into something that was completely off our syllabus, which consequently paved the way for a breath of fresh air for us. Furthermore, our curiosity in the extremely interesting subject of combinatorial mathematics pro drove us forward throughout our project. Last but not the least, the project also provided us a chance to increase our knowledge through by learning the basic as well as the newfound concepts concerning our topic. Now let's look at the timeline concerned to the Hill Chivit theorem. First, in 1927, Dutch mathematician Bartel Lindet van der Waarden proposed the van der Waarden theorem. Then in 1928, British mathematician, philosopher and economist Frank Ramsey discovered a theorem in his paper that led to the foundation of Ramsey theory. Now in 1946, the first game of cubic was made and so then finally, in 1963, the Hale Jewett theorem was published as a combinatorial result of the Ramsey theory by American student researchers Alfred W. Hayes and Robert L. Jewett. Then in 1971, the proof of the Graham Rothschild theorem was published by American mathematician pair of Ronald Graham and Bruce Lee Rothschild. And in 1988, the Israeli mathematician Saharan Shella found a new and more compact proof of the Hale Jewett theorem. Then in 1991, the density version of the hale jewett theorem was proved by American-Israeli mathematician Hillel Furstenberg and Israeli mathematician Itzhak Kadmelchen. Now before jumping straight to the hale jewett theorem, we first need to understand what is the Ramsey theory. Now the Ramsey theory is a branch of combinatorics that focuses on the appearance of order in a substructure given a structure of specific size. It was discovered by and named after British mathematician Frank Plumpet Ramsey. Now, what the Ramsey theory basically does is that it deals with the task of finding order amongst apparent chaos. Now, the Ramsey theorem, which was given by Ramsey himself, states that one will find monochromatic clicks in any edge labeling of a sufficiently large complete graph, where a complete graph is a graph in which every vertex is adjacent to or is connected by an edge to every other vertex and clicks are a subset of vertices such that there exists an edge between any pair of vertices in that subset of vertices. Now, the Ramsey theory mainly consists of two key theorems, which are the hale chivet theorem and the van der Waals theorem. Now, coming to our topic, which is the hale chivet theorem, which is a, basically a fundamental combinatorial result of the Ramsey theory. It was found by Alfred Hales and Robert Jewett in 1963, as we have already mentioned. And like we said before, it is one of the two key theorems in the Ramsey theorem. And what it does is that it generalizes the other key theorem in the, in the Ramsey theory, the van der Waals theorem. Now, the, what it basically means is that for any positive integers, n and c, there is a number h such that if the cells of a h-dimensional cube are colored with c color, there must be one row, column, or certain diagonal of length n having all the cells of the same color. Thus, we can conclude by the standard strategy steering argument that if two players are given alternate chances, then there must exist a winning strategy for the first player. Before we go into what the theorem actually is or its proof or applications, let me first introduce some basic definitions which I will be using to explain the theorem in detail. Let us start with what is an alphabet. In formal language theory, an alphabet is simply defined as a non-empty set on m distinct elements. If the al alphabet is defined on m symbols, for example, if I were to say that I have an alphabet A defined on m symbols, then A is actually a set having the elements from 1 to m. Alphabet A could also be represented by writing m inside square braces. Now, what is a string? A sequence of characters or symbols is known as a string. Now, what is a parameter word? It is basically a string having its each character belonging to a given alphabet. Uh, a word is denoted by W. Also, the set of all words of length n on the alphabet A can be denoted by A to the power n. 
if every character of w represents a coordinate of a point in space for example 1 2 3 may represent a point with coordinates 1 2 and 3 then an is called as the n dimensional cube on alphabet a now let us move forward to roots a root is a word containing at least one wild character star a root is represented by the 18th letter of the Greek alphabet tau. Mathematically, a root can be defined as shown in the slide, where A is a symbol contained in A. For example, tau be a root defined on alphabet A, where tau is defined as 1 star 2 3. Then all possible words that can be obtained from this root are 1 1 2 3, 1 2 2 3 and 1 3 2 3. Now, what is a combinatorial line? Mathematically, a combinatorial line is the set of all possible words that can be obtained from a specific given root. This line can be represented as a capital L with a subscript of tau. Let us consider a root tau equal to star 3 star defined on the alphabet A. The combinatorial line will be defined on tau will be equal to a set containing elements 1, 3, 1. 232 and 333. Graphically, this can be shown as the diagonal of the upper face of this cube shown in this slide. Finally, let us move to our main topic, Hale's Schwedt theorem. Hale's Schwedt theorem states that for given positive integers k and c, there exists a positive integer n such that for every c coloring of a n-dimensional hypercube of side length k there exists a monochromatic combinatorial line. The minimum possible n is represented by hj kc. In first case, hj 1c equal to 1 because here every line is a monochromatic combinatorial line. In second case, hj 2 2 equal to 2 and in the third case, hj 3 2 equal to 3. These two results can be observed from one common understanding and they are very simple to prove. Let me explain hale joet theorem using an example by taking k equal to 3, c equal to 2, and n equal to 2. We get a 2d 3 cross 3 grid. Now let us check if we can get a 2 coloring so as to avoid producing a monochromatic combinatorial line in the process. It is clear that we can get a possible coloring as shown in the figure on this slide. But now let us try the same for k equal to 3, c equal to 2, and n equal to 8. Now, can we get a possible coloring? Actually, if n is greater than hj, kc, only then it would be possible to find a such a c coloring. And this is what the theorem is trying to state. Now, let me prove hale schwedt theorem in the previous case where k equal to 3, c equal to 2, and n equal to 8. Let us imagine a 8 dimensional hypercube w where each element or we can say a point in space is a string of 8 numbers from 1 to 3. The idea is simple. We are going to reduce this bigger task into smaller and simpler versions of Hilgeret theorem. In this particular case, to the cases n equal to 2, c equal to 2, k equal to 2, and n equal to 6, c equal to 2, and k equal to 3. Let me color each point with either of the two colors, red and blue. The, I shall prove the result by assuming a contradiction that there do, does not exist any monochromatic combinatorial line in any coloring of the hypercube. Considering an element of length 8, if I were to fix the first 6 elements and let the last two vary, I will get a 3 cross 3 grid. Consider the positions 1, 1, 1, 2 and 2, 2 of this grid. Each of these must be filled with either of the two colors. So by pigeonhole principle, two of them must be colored with the same color. And since any two of them are the part of the same combinatorial line, the third element must be colored with the opposite color so as to avoid forming a monochromatic combinatorial line. Hence, we can classify all of our points into six different classes. Now consider these seven elements which are shown on this slide of the six dimensional cube. Again, by pigeonhole principle, two of these elements must fall into the same class. Let us suppose, for instance, 
दैट वन 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 टू एंड वन वन टू 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 फॉल इन टू क्लास फाइव देन दीज फोर पॉइंट्स आर कलर रेड एंड दीज टू पॉइंट्स विच आर शोन हेयर आर कलर ब्लू नाउ कंसिडर वन लास्ट एलिमेंट वन वन थ्री 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 टू थ्री थ्री इफ वी कलर इट रेड देन द कॉम्बिनेटोरियल लाइन वन वन स्टार 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 टू स्टार स्टार इज फिल एंटायरली विथ रेड एंड इफ वी कलर इट विथ ब्लू देन द कॉम्बिनेटोरियल लाइन वन वन स्टार 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 टू थ्री थ्री इज एंटायरली फिल्ड विथ ब्लू दस कॉन्टिडेंटिंग आर अंजप्शन सिमिलरली फॉर एनी पेयर फ्रॉम द सेवन एलिमेंट्स the same could be proven hence our assumption is wrong and there do not exist a possible coloring as so as to avoid getting a monochromatic combinatorial line actually the above argument was somewhat not useful to us because the above theorem also holds true for n equal to 4 however one can prove the general case of the hale stirred theorem by similar methods using mathematical induction while using induction on k where k is the number of elements in the alphabet a so far we have seen the basics of hjt and proof of a special case now we we'll look at an important result generalized by hayes jordan theorem which is von der waarden theorem the basic idea of the theorem is for any set s containing number from 1 to 10 if each member is colored either red or green randomly we get a sequence which will look like this if we look at this sequence closely will obtain another sequence of number containing equally colored and spaced here we obtain the sequence 1 4 and 7 1 4 and 7 are equally colored and spaced with the space is 2 if we find a different combination here also we'll find another sequence for equally colored and spaced numbers which is 2 6 and 10 here the space between two consecutive numbers is 3 now an arithmetic sequence is a sequence where each term increases by adding or subtracting some constant which is also known as arithmetic progression or ap the statement of von der waarden theorem is for all c and k there exists a w such that for every c coloring of 1 to w there exists a monochromatic arithmetic sequence of length k the sequence can be shown mathematically by this e a plus d a plus 2d to a plus k minus 1 into d the length of the sequence is k and different between two consecutive uh, numbers is d where d is not equals to 0 and k belongs to natural number in previous sequences here we had d is equals to 2 and the other sequence we had d is equals to 3 now the w is called von der waarden number which is represented as a w into bracket c comma k von der waarden number can be obtained for c less than 2 by proof but for c greater than 2 von der numbers von der waarden numbers are bounded above by these equation the proof of von der waarden theorem can be given by hjt the significance of hjt is very general result from which many ramsey type theorems may be easily derived the hayes-jewell theorem is presently one of the most useful techniques in ramsey theory without this result ramsey theory would be more properly called ramsey theorems the density hjt is one of the deepest result in external combinatorics The HJT talks about the presence of combinatorial structures in high-dimensional objects. Hayes-Jewett theorem generalizes von der Waarden theorem, and it is generalized by Graham's Rothschild theorem. Now we we'll look at the applications of Hayes-Jewett theorem. This theorem is applied in various positional games, which is also a branch of combinatorics. Here we will look at tic-tac-toe. In a 3 by 3 board the game always ends in a draw if both players play optimally but if we increase width or dimension of board of board then the game becomes more engaging the hjt statement for high dimensional tic tac toe is for a fixed width n 
there is some dimensional k such that for a certain n and k and above games can and cannot end in a draw the simplified version of this statement is there exists such a combinatorial line for the first player to win when the second player can't force a draw the tabular representation of the draw and win situation would look like this here n as a width and k as a dimension if we analyze the pattern formed in a table we can see that if we increase the width it leaves more species species in each line for second player to block first player's move thus it makes easier to force a draw for player 2 increase in dimension creates more direction and space to make combinatorial line for player 1 it makes easier to force a win for player 1 the question mark in the table indicates the computer simulated results which are yet to be rigorously proven another applications of hayes joint theorem are ramsey theory as mentioned before and also used to prove properties about lattices in for uh, of elementary substructures galois width theorem and density adjetty are also very important result derived from adjetty thus adjetty is a very crucial result in the combinatorial mathematics so this was the research by naman kumar deep patel and shivanshu gupta on the hayes joint theorem this video will help our audience in developing a basic understanding of hayes joint theorem we have provided a general overview of the topics related to hayes joint theorem we have tried to provide our audience with the basic background knowledge related to combinatorics which helps them further understanding the theorem in a much more convenient way we have tried to present the proof of hayes joint theorem based on the principle of mathematics induction and closely associated with shellas proof of the same thank you